All right, welcome everyone. This is our 10th, oh, see I got a little choked up, 10th and final lesson of our 10 week course. And it has been so much fun. Yes, I'm getting a little, little sad because I've enjoyed doing this whole thing, this whole 10 lessons with you. And uh, I have saved one of my personal favorite ones for last. And I really, really hope that you enjoy this one. Our materials that we're gonna need, we're just gonna be using brushes today. We're going back to just our basic brushes. So we're gonna need a large flat brush. This is how we're gonna get our background in. Then we're gonna switch off to more of a medium flat brush. This is gonna help us with cutting in that umbrella. And then we're also going to do a nice round brush. It's gonna give us some uh, point for some details, right? And like always, we've got our basic colors, our red, yellow, blue, black, white. I've got my plate and I've got a couple of cups of water. The reason I've got a couple is that honestly, uh, I might oversaturate one cup with all the blue that we may do in the background. And if I want to switch to the red, I might pull up some blue. So I may even have, it's nice to have an extra clean cup of water available or go ahead and you can pause to switch out your water when we get there. So we're going to start working on the background. My original is in 11 by 14 size. I'm going to be doing the demonstration on just the eight by 10 size. So you'll see there's a, there's a size difference, but I'll show you that you can still take the same, the same painting and, and just make it a little smaller. It's just, just about the same perspective. So you just have to see where it sits in the same size. Um, okay, and then the first colors we're gonna go ahead and pull out is we're gonna actually pull out blue. We need some blue, blue, blue for our background. I've got that on my plate. And you know what, honestly, this still might be too much. Sometimes I put out way too much blue. Blue is such a strong color. We end up using a lot less of the blue than we will for other things because the, the background of like the sky is more of a lighter blue. So we'll be using our white to tone down the blue. But if you look, our, our sky is not just a normal light blue, sunny, like a, a, a spring day. It is actually a little more gray. And the way we're gonna get that blue to look gray is we're gonna actually put out some red. So the red, when we add just a touch of it to our blue, is gonna tone it down and gray it out. That naturally happens anyway, and sometimes we don't want to, but today we're gonna use it to our advantage. All right, so I've got blue, I've got a little bit of red, I've got some white out, and I've got my largest brush ready. And of course, we remember that our dry brush doesn't wanna start out, it wants to make sure that we're nice and wet and primed. So take that, dip that in the water, drag it off on the edge, and then we're gonna get going. So the first part we're gonna do is you can see there's a, uh, an upper half that's more the sky and then there's a lower half that's the ground. We're gonna actually do the top half first. Um, we're gonna do that and even if it, if it goes and crosses over where our land is gonna be, it's fine. Our land um, ground area is darker and we'll be able to cut in over top of that. We understand now with, with acrylics we can layer over top. Right, so it's all gonna be about the different layers. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this, this sky, and we're gonna do this diagonal streaking uh, motion. And that's gonna kind of mimic the, the motion of the, the rain. The rain is gonna be coming in sideways. And so even our background is gonna have the same um, kind of lines in it. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna grab some blue. I'm gonna grab just a little touch of red. Kind of come over here. Now that's really dark. That's not what I'm going for really, but I am kind of getting that blue to gray out a little bit. And then I'm gonna come over here to the white. You can start to see, you see that? 
you start to see that that really, it's not that bright blue like a sky blue, it's more of a uh, kind of a dusty blue. And that's what that little touch, little tiny touch of red is doing to that. So I'm going to grab that blue, that white, that little touch of red, and I'm gonna start doing these streaks. Now, I may have the color that I want, or I may go, hmm, I want it a little different, and that's okay, we can always adjust. Let's see here. As I'm doing that, I'm looking, and it looks like I may have actually even added a little yellow to the original sometimes. Even I can forget all of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab just a touch of yellow, actually, to kind of get it a little more in that, that green side. Yeah. Okay. So there was a little bit of yellow, but we have yellow on hand. No problem. So... So yeah, I'm doing a little bit of the blue, the yellow, right? And then just a little touch of the red, just a little touch. And then I'm going to just do these sideways strokes on the canvas, okay? So going back, I'm gonna grab blue, little touch of red, little touch of yellow, decent amount of white. And sometimes I just let the colors even mix on the canvas, right? And by doing that, that's where I can get these nice streaks. See where the colors um, are mixing, right? And using this larger brush, I can really kind of push into the canvas and it's nice. So I grab all those colors and I just start pulling all of that right across the canvas there. So, see when you look and you see that it's maybe a different shade than you needed, it's very easy to adjust as you're going. So I'm just going, going down, we're gonna kind of go more like two thirds of the canvas here, but I'm not really worried about how smooth or straight this is right here. We're just making sure that it comes down into this bottom part right here. This is also where if you like to have your canvases look more finished, so we can go ahead and add to our edge right here as we go around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just do the color. I'm just going to do the color to about where I'm stopping it right here on the edge. And then I can be able to wrap the bottom color around. So it looks like the whole painting is extending around the edge. And that's really kind of neat. So sometimes you, you can do that when you're doing multiple colors. On the canvas. This also gives me a nice dry area for right now to be able to hold on to the canvas while I paint the edge. Sometimes when it's the whole canvas is wet, it's hard to get the whole edge. All right. So I'm just kind of smoothing out, making sure I've filled in. I don't have any, any dots or anything right now. I've covered my whole surface with that. And you can see we've got kind of this diagonal, kind of going from this corner to this corner. I was just trying to maintain that same, same look. I'm gonna check in with everybody before we move on to our next step. Well, it looks like we have finished and caught up to this point, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the ground part. So before I said we were using red to kind of gray it down, we are, but we are still gonna actually use some yellow in this to kind of make more of a darker teal color for this ground area. 
So what we're gonna do is I still have my brush. It still has some of the paint from before just because we were doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that out so that I'll be ready to get this darker color in. All right, we're going to, this time we're gonna go over here. We're gonna grab some of that blue, that nice deep blue. I'm gonna grab some yellow because I am gonna do kind of, and just a little bit. I don't want it to be a green very much, but it's still gonna be kind of a bluish green. And then I could still maybe grab just a little touch of red, but really I don't need as much. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna go ahead and draw a line for our ground. Now, we like it to be straight, but ground doesn't always straight. The only thing in, that naturally levels itself in nature is water. So whenever you're doing water, if it's the ocean, if it's even like a, a vase with water in it, that always has to be very, very precise and straight. When we're doing land, sometimes there's bumps and stuff, so it's okay. It does not have to be exact. What we are going to do, though, is that we're going to do this in the bottom third of our canvas. Okay, so a lot of times we're breaking up our canvas into thirds. One, two, three. So our first two thirds of our canvases, we're going to make that sky. So now this bottom part, I'm going to do that. And really, I'm kind of just going to draw my line to incorporate what I did. I could have gone down a little bit farther with my, uh, with my sky, but it's going to be all right. So I'm just going to bring this so I can see it a little more straight, but I'm just going to go ahead and do a nice line guide for myself with the edge of my brush. All right. And this, uh, this stroke is going to be a back and forth stroke the whole time. Whereas our top one was a diagonal. This one is just gonna be back and forth. So now I'm gonna just start filling that in. We're not pulling any white this time. We want this to be a little bit darker. And it's just a back and forth of this darker blue, kind of a blue teal. Again, if you wanna to try to tone it down even a little bit more, you can grab just a touch of red, but that's only if you're feeling confident in some of your mixing. So some of it might look a little more blue, some might look a little more green. Um, honestly, kind of the different layers of those looks really cool too. As you can see right here, I've got a little more green, that's a little more blue. It's, it's kind of giving me some variance. Um, and so we're just going to fill in the bottom third of this, this canvas with this darker color. And if you're getting too streaky right there, that just means your canvas is asking for more paint. This first layer might just be something that requires a little more paint to cover. And then it'll kind of seal the canvas in for all the rest of our paint, which will be easier to apply. And again, if you're wanting to do the wrapped look, this is where I can go and I can do the bottom and then the other sides of the canvas in the same color, kind of matching up with how high I went. And it's always great, especially since you've mixed this color while you still have it mixed and it's the same color, right? Also, if you're having trouble kind of holding it, you can always turn a, a painting upside down. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be straight up and down. Get certain angles. If you're having trouble with it, just turn it, turn it upside down. And now I can easily, easily get to the bottom of the canvas finish that out. So yeah, just the back and forth. Try to make sure I cover up any, any spots of where those, those meet right there. And 
I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out rinse out my brush. I'm going to rinse it out really well, especially because it's this darker, darker blue color. All right, so we filled in this bottom portion right here, and we're going to actually give it a little bit of time to dry. So I want to let you know that um, you may pause this point of the tutorial if you want just to allow this to dry we want to have it to where when you touch it I, I would show you my hands I already have paint on my hands like that already happens but when you touch it you shouldn't be able to because we're going to be using chalk next to put in some of the outline of our umbrella and so being able to draw on this with our chalk it would be easier if it is still a little drier it can it can still work if it's slightly damp but really being drier would be the best. So go ahead and pause. And then once it's dry, go ahead and join back. Okay, so we are got to the point where we're gonna bring out our chalk. Now the chalk is a great way, like we've used already during this course, is to get in the outlines of what we're about to paint in. And we're gonna about to do the outlines for this umbrella. Now I want you to look, we're going to just be doing the basic shapes. We're going to put in the extra details once we've done it, but really we're just looking that this is um, a certain shape, right? And I don't know if you've noticed, there's actually another shape we have to put in as well. And you'll see once we do that, because there's something else in this that our eye just is used to, but we don't realize there's a shadow right here that's also the shape of the umbrella that we're about to also chalk in. So we're gonna actually be chalking in the umbrella and also the shadow of the umbrella that we'll be putting in. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna look at just the basic shape. I wanna put in three dots, okay? I'm gonna put in a dot about, let's see, right here. That's where one corner of my umbrella is going to be. Um, I'm going to put a dot in just, just about one finger above my horizon over here to where another dot. And then I'm going to get about halfway in my land, maybe a little bit higher. Since I'm in a smaller canvas, I'm going to get, try to give myself a little more room because this is a smaller bit. I'm going to do another dot right here. These dots are going to give me some guidelines to where I'm going to be drawing this. And this is just a kind of a U shape. I'm gonna start with this dot right here, see? And then I'm going to just swoop down, curving to get to that other dot down there. Gonna kind of level it out. And then I'm gonna swoop it up to the other dot. So I've made a U, I've made a U shape. That's, that's our first step. We're just getting a U shape in there. And again, the great thing about chalk, if you go, oh, I don't really like that. I wish that it had level out a little, I wish I'd made it flatter right here. You can take a rag, go ahead and rub that right off, come right back and fix whatever you're wanting to. So chalk is not permanent. This is just a guideline for us but our umbrella is kind of in this tilted angle. So there's one part that's a little higher than the other. Next thing we're gonna do is now, I'm gonna also do some more little dots that's gonna show me what that little swoop. So I'm gonna do one, two, and then three more dots. Just three dots in the middle. Can you see those three dots? I wanna make sure, looks like just three little dots right there. So we've got a U, three dots. So now we're just doing connect the dots. We're doing connect the dots. So I'm going to go from this corner dot and swoop down a little curve and go up. So that's one. I'm going to go to the next one, swoop down, go up. And the more that you swoop down and up, the more exaggerated your umbrella is, or it looks like it's more closed. If you have uh, more shallow swoops, It'll look a little more open. It'll just give it a different look. I'm gonna swoop there. Okay, now this one is different. This last one, because 
we're giving a sideways angle of the umbrella, it, they don't actually connect. This dot is going to do a half swoop and connect down right there. You see that? So that one's a little different, just at the edge. But we did three, three swoops of our connect the dots. And again, if you didn't like the way that it was shaped, this is chalk, you can fix it. And then this last one swoops in this way. All right, so there's our basic umbrella shape. Still looks really kind of weird, but it's just that basic shape. Now what we have to do is we have to do what the, the shadow of this is, which is basically the opposite. Now we're gonna be doing instead of an up umbrella or, or U, we're gonna be doing a down one. So this time I'm gonna kind of line up. I'm gonna do another dot down here and another dot kind of in line down here. So that our shadow is lining up and we're gonna still start from the same point. See our, our shadow is gonna originate from the same base as our umbrella. So this time now I'm going to swoop down right? And this is going to swoop down. Do you see that? So now we've got an upside down U. And then this one, we're going to just do a cut with this one. It's not exact. We're going to just do two dots this time. And we're just going to do a couple of our connect the dot swoops like that. So it's not an exact um, reflection, but the reflection actually gets, um, when we add in the raindrops, it gets a little distorted, right? But that is, that is our umbrella base, our shadow. And then we have one last thing that we have to do is we have the handle. And the handle, Actually, if remember this has been our center point the whole time, our umbrella would have the handle coming out of its center. So I'm going to imaginary in my head, draw, start doing the line up, which is getting me about right here. It's not exactly on that one, but it's gonna get me right here. And I'm going to just continue that line straight up, straight up and then a little curve handle at the top. All right, I know that was a lot of drawing. We don't normally do this much drawing. We're normally painting, but putting this in right now with the chalk that's easy to fix means that we're gonna feel more confident when it comes to painting in these shapes, right? So that is, that is why we are doing this and taking the time that we need to, all right? So this is all good, all good. So the next thing, I'm gonna go and put my chalk aside and I'm going to pull out my medium flat brush. I really like this brush, especially when I want to follow along the edge. This gives me a nice uh, line that I can use when I'm going sideways. And then when I want to fill in, I can use the wider part to fill it in. If I was doing everything, I could cut in good lines with the, the skinny part, but then when I'd have to fill it in, it would have to take so many more strokes. So my medium flat brush gives me the versatility of the, of the straight lines and then being able to fill it in with wide and less strokes. All right, so what we're gonna do is, going to get my brush and I'm going to switch out to my clean water and get that damp. And first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take solid red, just our straight red, and we are going to fill in our umbrella shape, right? Just red. So I'm going to come in. This is just the base color. We're going to go back in with shadows. So do not worry if it looks a little, little too red. Although you'll notice that the color red shifts a little bit because of the color background that we have anyway. 
So I'm going to just see, I'm using the straight edge of my, you can draw right over, we can paint right over the chalk. And I'm going to just start filling in the shape of our umbrella. So cut in line with the, the straight edge of my flat brush, swooping right on the chalk. I've got a lot more confidence because we took the time to draw that. And then I'm just going to fill that in. I like these more downward strokes, especially from the top. It'll kind of, the, the direction of the stroke really sometimes will matter the feel of it, but we are gonna do a couple layers to really fill this in. We'll do more layers on the top than the bottom. The bottom, we want it to kind of blend in with the, the ground because it's just the reflection. This is the actual umbrella. As you can see, the red's actually doing pretty well to cover. We can still see it through it a little bit. But we're gonna just fill that in. See, like I said, I love using this flat brush because it helps me fill in the larger, larger areas. So I can see maybe I grabbed a little bit more right here to fill in any spots that look like I can see through it a little more. I don't want it to be still too thick. If you do it too thick, it'll take forever to dry. A thinner layer of paint is always best. It's always best because you can always go back over top of it. If it's too thick, you're gonna be sitting around waiting for it to dry. Um, and watching paint dry is not that energy as much as actually getting the paint. Earthquake. <laughs> okay, so I've done the umbrella part, but now I'm gonna go down here to the shadow following this. And this one I'm gonna do kind of more back and forth and I am not going to do it as thick. In fact, I kind of want it to be able to see through it a little bit. We'll still be able to go back and add more shadow, but we're, yeah, like I said, we're only gonna do one, one coat of red down at the bottom. Whereas on the top, we will probably end up doing two coats of red if we need to. So just getting that in. Do not worry about the chalk if you still see some. Um, once the painting is dry or that area is dry, we can just wipe off the chalk and that is not a big deal. So as you can see, I, I try not to do it completely solid in the shadow, but we can still, we're gonna still go back with some darker points. And then, yeah, we're gonna do the handle in, uh, later on with kind of more of a darker color. So now, right now, we've got the basic shape of this filled in, right? Again, if I've done a thin enough layer, I should be able to in just a little bit. Now, if you do, try to go back over paint too quickly while it's still wet and you put another layer. Sometimes what's interesting, it'll actually start to pull up the first layer of paint if it's not dry yet. So allowing some time to dry is good. I'm gonna rinse out my brush just so that my paint on my brush does not dry. Very good, very good. I'm liking, I'm liking the shape. We're gonna still see, let's see, some of the details that we know that we need to do to get it from looking like this to over here. We're gonna add in some more um, shadows and outline shadows on our umbrella. We're gonna definitely paint the handle. <laughs> and then we're gonna be adding in some, uh, some of the raindrops as well as the the raindrop uh, ripples, which are really fun. 
the raindrop ripples are the next to last thing. So we're getting there. You can see the different stages that we're gonna do, but it's really kind of coming together. I'm excited. All right, so it looks like I've had a little time to let my, um, my umbrella dry so that I can now go back in and start adding in some darker colors and some of the shading that really brings the umbrella from this flat look to kind of have more contour. So what we're actually going to do, we're, even though it looks like black, it's actually not going to be black that we're going to do. We're going to actually do a little mix with our red and adding in some blue. The blue is going to make it a darker color, and that's how we're going to do the shadowing. Especially since I already have a bunch of blue already on my plate, I might as well use that. You know, um, again, sometimes it's uh, it's hard to put out just a little bit, but I put out way too much. So what I'm going to do now, again, I'm make sure my brush didn't dry out too much. I'm going to prime that again. Um, so I'm going to grab some red, and then I'm going to go right here and to my blue and grab just a little bit. So now I've kind of got, and I'm not getting tons, but I've got this darker, so I've got this darker color. If I just spread it out, it's kind of a purpley, reddish color and this is the color we're going to use for the shading and for the lines and like i said i'm not doing too much because really i'm going to do a little more of like a bright dry brush technique that is just kind of skimming a little bit on there and not really putting a thick layer because i still want to kind of see through it so the first thing i want to do is i want to make these lines you see the lines that kind of separate the segments of my umbrella so that is going to come from our corners and going down to the, um, the center point that we started with. So the first line I'm going to do, I'll actually start, I think I'll start over here. This will be easier. So I've got my first, you know, first point right here and here's the second one. I'm going to do use the edge of my brush and I'm going to just trace down a line. It's not going to be straight. It's going to curve a little bit. We're going to make sure all of our curves are going to kind of go towards the center. So I'm going to curve it slightly and get it down to, can you see that? From this point and curve it down to kind of that bottom part right there. And now I've kind of got my first segment of the umbrella, all right, like that. The next segment of the umbrella, I'm going to do this point going down, but instead I'm going to curve it because I'm on this side of the handle. I'm going to curve it towards the center. So I kind of have this another U shape in the center of my umbrella. So let's see, I'm going to go like this, curve it down like that. You see, see how it kind of curves towards that center point. Remember we had that center point right there. The last one, um, yeah, this last one, I'm going to come from this point, and this is also going to curve to the center right here. So those are our segments of the umbrella. And then while I still have, I've got a tiny bit of the paint still on here, but it's starting to dry out, which I really like because I don't want to do too much, I'm going to come up to the corners and I'm going to brush just a little bit of shadow along this edge. Just a little bit of shadow, maybe down here more at the bottom. You see that? And then maybe grab just a tiny bit more. I'm going to do some more shadow just kind of along the top edge of that. So you can see it's starting to make some darker areas. Maybe I might have to mix some more. Like I said, I was letting it not be too much paint on my brush. So this is where maybe I'll do a little bit of shadowing 
down here. If you get too much paint, you might feel like you're putting in a lot of black. So it just, it really is like, I can't even see a bead of paint on there. I just, I just see, there's just a little bit of moisture. So maybe I'm gonna come in here and bring out some of the shadow. Grab a little bit more. From that corner. So this is again where the flat brush is nice. It's giving me this flat edge that I can line up with the, uh, the edge here, but then the, the wider part to be able to pull. So that's just giving us some some shadow. Look at that. That looks really neat. So now our umbrella has a lot more definition to it. This is also the color. Get some more. This is the darker color that we're going to use to do our umbrella handle. So this is where I can go ahead and follow that handle all the way up. I'm going to curve it like that. And actually I'm going to make the handle a little bit, a little bit wider. The handle always is a little bit thicker at the top for us to be able to hold on to. So maybe I just follow it and do like a second, second part. to make it a little bit wider right there. And again, that extra chalk that I see, I will, I will be able to get, get rid of that later on. So there's that darker handle. So that's kind of neat because that, that sets it back. It makes it look like it's more in the background or at least farther in on the umbrella. Also with this darker color, I'm gonna go back down on my shadow area right here and I'm gonna just go back and forth and wiggle in some lines. If you can see, see I'm kind of just taking my brush, I'm taking my brush, I'm gonna make it flat like this way and kind of wiggle in some lines and even kind of going across where the outline is a little bit because this is where you know there's rain there's water and when there's reflections that are moving it distorts the shape so we don't want it to look like a perfect a perfect shape right this gives us the opportunity to kind of break that up a little bit so that we know that this is more of a reflection. There we go. So I still see some red. I've kind of added in some darker, darker spots. We've got some darker parts of our, of our umbrella. Now, if you look at your umbrella and you go, oh no, I really messed up. I did way too much shadow on a certain area. Let's say I didn't like this much shadow I did right here. Let's say I didn't like that. What you can do, rinse out your brush, go back with just your solid red and you can go back and tone that down again and kind of just go back over it. So there, there is no messing up. If there's any point where you're like, oh, I really just did way too much. I wish I hadn't. You can go back over it. Look, you can go right back over top of a section and lighten that back up. So there is no messing up. You didn't mess up. It is all about if you want to keep that there, then that's fine. If not, 
then you can go back. Or even if you want to just highlight, bring a little more of that bright red back and you want to go back in with just a little bit in some spots, right? You can do that. Kind of liking how mine is having a little more shadow and darkness this time than my original. Um, you know, honestly, I feel like there are some gloomy days and maybe even this umbrella is having a gloomy day. And that's reflected on how he's a little more shadowed today. I kind of like it. All right. We are, we are pretty much done with the umbrella part, which is so fun. I love how that weird shape just comes together when we start putting in the details, right? And like I said, I'm still ignoring the chalk lines. I know I'll be able to erase those pretty soon. So the next part, well, first let me check in and make sure everyone is ready to move on to the next part. So I don't want to leave anybody because this is this is our next um, to last final step before we finish. All right, we're going to move on to one of my favorite parts, which are the little raindrop swirls. So it's those little um, little ripple circles that you see that are going to be all scattered around the ground, and I'm going to show you how we do this. So we're going to take our round brush. So this is a medium round. I can do this one. Or if you feel like maybe you're having trouble with your pressure and you like to do something, and maybe you want to go for more of a skinnier round brush, that is fine. Either one will work here. Mine's dry, so I'm going to go ahead and dampen that. Um, and we're going to be using our white, just plain straight white. I've got a bunch out. Probably I got way too much. But the, the whole technique for this, so our eye knows that these are supposedly circles on the ground. But when we paint them to, to give the perception of that, we're actually going to be painting ovals, right? So a circle, when you see it from the side, is more of an oval. So that's what we're going to be painting. They're going to be more ovals. So they'll be tighter in the center and they will be wider on the sides. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint. My paint is a little bit dried out because it's been sitting here and it's a thicker kind. I want it to, to be nice and smooth for me. So I'm going to do that. Will that get a little bit? I'm only painting with the very tip of my brush, so I'm going to make sure and just get the paint right there on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to come here and pick a spot, right? I'm going to pick a spot. And the way that we do this, here we go. I'm get you closer. Here we go. All right. So I am going to start with kind of doing the center, right? I'm going to kind of curve, like a little C. You see that? There's a little C. And then I'm going to come around the other way, kind of another little C circle, right? And I'm going wide, I'm going out. But the, but the, uh, the top and the bottom get close to each other. So see how it gets wide, there's more space, but then the center is more like that. And you can kind of curve it a little more in. So it's kind of a, kind of some swirl to it, right? Um, let's see, I'll do another one over here. So I can kind of, you can also do it more as like a continuous swirl. And if you do, the continuous swirl like that, again, it's going wide, but staying, staying close together from the top and the bottom marks. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sporadically put these all around our painting. Now, I will say that the um, droplet 
uh, ripples that are down, these are closer to us as, a, as the um, paint observer. So these are gonna be a little bit bigger. So these are gonna be, they're gonna be coming out and they're rounder, they're a lot bigger. Whereas maybe these back here, we're gonna say those are farther away. These are gonna be a little bit smaller. Right? So you can see, I'm also saying that there's distance by making this smaller versus this one being a larger one. And it doesn't have, they do not have to look exactly alike. They are different rain droplet ripples. It is more the fact that we are just going to put them and we are gonna overlay some of these, right? Right here over the umbrella shadow, not the umbrella itself. And so as I'm going to go up here, maybe this is a small one. Right, and then this one. Right. Just kind of filling in different spots. Every place that we put these, we are going to end up adding a big old raindrop to the center of it. So that is gonna be fun. So it'll just help us see where we put those. So you'll have to see the spacing on your own canvas about where they will fit, right? You want a lot of raindrops, you're gonna be putting a lot of these in. And just going out. So it's just, some are attached, some are kind of more like little C's, kind of connected to each other, right? They look like little swirls right now. Maybe I've got room for one more, maybe one more right there. Maybe I'll just do a little one. There we go. So that is all of the raindrop swirls. And then the raindrop itself is actually very easy, but I do wanna say that there's a certain direction that makes it easier because um, even though we know the raindrop is coming from this direction, what I need is I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna start my stroke in the center and I'm gonna actually stroke up. For one, that'll make the bottom part have more of the paint, which is like the, the raindrop, and then it'll kind of have the streak get a little bit lighter as we, as we go. And all the rest of the rain is gonna be the same way. Well, we'll start where we know the raindrop is and then the streak will go up. So here's our last thing. Get some paint and I push it right here and then I do a little zoop like that. I mean, you don't have to do that sound effect, but <laughs> I just push it right here. And then I remember that direction we've been going is that diagonal, a diagonal part. And this is where we are going to have some crossover our umbrella itself. In fact, we'll even have some raindrops that are right on top of our umbrella. So the main thing right here is that everywhere I did, whoop, that's a big raindrop, that's fine. I'm gonna embrace it. Everywhere we did a swirl, now we do a raindrop line. So push in the center and then we pull it diagonal. Swoop. I keep grabbing some paint because I do want to keep the paint more on the tip of my brush. Mine's trying to right up my brush. And I don't paint with the side of my brush. I paint with the tip of the brush. Okay, so those are all the raindrops there. And now still following that same, same diagonal line that I was creating, I'm going to do a few of them going across the umbrella. 
like this, right? And then I'm gonna come up to my sky. And again, I'm pushing down and then I'm dragging it up diagonal. So it gets lighter at the top and kind of has more weight at the bottom for the raindrop. So this is where we just fill in all of the, the raindrops. And this is our last thing. Look at this. We are finishing this out. You're seeing it come together. It's coming together. Oop. Touch my paintbrush. So that's where the drop's going. There we go. Again, if your paint starts to get streaky, if you're feeling like you can't see it very well, you either need more, more paint or maybe your paint like mine is trying to dry out on you, a little touch of water back in your brush, back in your brush can help to make sure that it's doing that. Now, maybe I do some that are a little skinnier and lighter, which those can be like farther away raindrops, you know, the ones that are just barely there or you can't really see, but oh, it really raining today. It's really raining. Look at that. <laughs> so we, we have finished. Look at that. Yeah, it was definitely more rainy here today. More rainy, but I like it. I really like it. So this is where you can kind of double check, make sure you didn't miss any of your raindrop um, ripples. And you know, make sure every single one has that. Like I said, the, uh, the chalk along the outline of your, your umbrella, you know, is easily wiped off. Just a very damp, very damp, uh, or lightly damp rag can help us just wipe that right off. I'm going to try to avoid any spots where we just painted because that could pull the paint off. But as you can see, when you move all those white little chalk lines, we have our finished umbrella in the rain. So thank you guys so much. I really had a great time. I hope that you feel more confident in just being able to try different parts of art now that through this week you learn some really neat techniques that maybe you can apply to something else and that maybe you'll see something and be willing to give it a try and understand there is no messing up. There's lots of ways to fix things. You can cover over things. You can start again and you can do so much with only our five basic colors. We have done such a range and I'm so thankful that you joined me and I hope that if we do this again that you'll join me again. All right, bye.